careening through San Francisco's notoriously twisted streets in a driving game is really nothing new. The same can be said for getting behind the wheel of some of America's more iconic muscle cars. We've been there, we've done that. The uncanny ability to shift from one vehicle to another on the fly, however, could make the ride a little more interesting. What we've seen so far of Driver San Francisco only scratches the surface of the game's story. But the game's big hook, the constant paranormal shifting from one vehicle to another, seems to be the result of the near-death experience of the game's leading man. One of the first things you'll do after stepping into the shoes of the good-willed cop Tanner is convincing your wise-cracking partner Jones that these strange powers are more than just crazy talk. I'm serious. This is real. This is happening to me. After a couple of improbable demonstrations, your formerly skeptical buddy is ready to roll with the psychic punches and take down the legendary criminal Jericho. Earlier missions act as a training ground that lets you learn the ins and outs of shifting between rides. At the press of a button, the gameplay slows to a crawl, and the camera zooms out to a top-down perspective of the city at large. Simply highlight the vehicle you'd like to jump into, press a button, and enjoy your new set of wheels. Unlike the last couple of games in the series, there's no on-foot GTA-style milling about in the new driver. So the speed rarely dips, and the action stays focused on the road. One of the game's racing missions requires you to get two separate vehicles across the finish line in first and second place respectively, introducing the rapid shift, letting you quickly swap from one car to another. There's no right or wrong way to go about your objective, though it certainly feels right to sabotage competitors by shifting into civilian vehicles to arrange a few devastating head-on collisions. You could simply opt to run a clean race, of course, but where's the fun in that? With over 120 licensed cars, there are plenty of options when it comes to obtaining a new vehicle. Players also have a choice between four distinct camera views, including a moderately detailed cockpit cam. Wild fishtailing, screeching tires, and careening around hairpin turns emphasize an arcade-like feel that prioritizes wild, high-energy car chases over realistic handling. Cars do take convincing damage, though, as you'll discover through orchestrating some true vehicular carnage using the shift mechanic. One of the more heated missions we've seen so far, The Escapist, demonstrates the tenacity of the cops in this virtual San Francisco. Evading this mob of flashing lights requires luck, speed, and keeping an eye on the overhead map. The police won't give up easily, but hijacking other vehicles in order to block and derail cruisers can certainly help your odds. Just don't expect to shift into a cop car and run yourself off the road. As it turns out, even the crazy comatose fever dreams of trauma victims have rules. So far, we've hightailed it through some of San Francisco's more iconic locations, including downtown and Fisherman's Wharf. There are some interesting things going down here, and we're anxious to see more. Hang on! Expect more coverage to surface as we approach driver San Francisco's North American release date of September 6th.